Fantastic. So you've got your 32 inputs, you've got your 32 outputs. How are you going to be able to see all of these inputs and outputs all at the same time? Well, I'm glad you've asked. The answer to that is the Sierra SVG Multiviewer. The Multiviewer, all right? SVG Multiviewer also has a very small footprint. It is one rack unit. It's this device here. You see the sexy blue LED just under my 32 by 32 panel? That is a one rack unit panel, all right? The one rack unit panel is um, it's a multi-viewer that's configured with cards. With cards. It's got space for two, four, six cards. So if you'll bring up slide number five, please, Geronimo. The first slide on the multi-viewer situation. Uh, you know, you know what? Bring up the next one, please. That one's got too much information on it. All right, now we're talking. You see the front of the panel, and you see the back of the panel where we're a card-based system. You've got room for six cards. So at maximum, if you wanted a single multi-viewer output, you could put five, five cards, each having four inputs. You've got 20 inputs on a single in output HD, uh, HD multi-viewer. However, this multi-viewer will also give you two separate multi-views. So if you wanted to have multi-view A with your first however many inputs and multi-view B, then you simply get a second output card. Output cards come in VGA, SDI, and whether you're in VGA or in SDI, it includes an HDMI output to come out with you. Very exciting, very exciting. So with room for six cards, if you're doing a single output multi-view, that means you've got room for five input cards. Five input cards, four inputs per card, that's 20 inputs on your multi-view screen. If you want to do two separate multi-views, then you've got room for four input cards, so that's 16 inputs, two outputs on your multi-view. Uh, uh, it's much, much better seen than talked about. So, uh, Hedonimo, can you bring up the multi-view output full screen program, please? Look at that, all right? This is one multi-view. This is one multi-view looking at one, two, three, four, five. This is a six, six input situation here, all right? So coming off of my router, I filled it up with a couple different media players, and I'm feeding it some Simpty bars, all right? Uh, come on back to camera, come on back to camera. Just as we can control the router from its web-based interface, the SVG MultiViewer is serving up its own web page too. So, Geronimo, can you go to Virtual One and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit, talk a little bit about the, the, the interface here. All right, this is my this is my MultiView control panel. On the right of the screen, you'll see the actual MultiView that I'm putting out. On the left of the screen, you'll see how I can lay out this MultiView. All right, now this MultiView is uh, it's all about routing your inputs to the different areas of your screen. There are a couple of preset templates here, some, some really nice ones, uh, some priority overlap, some input one duplicated, just looking at input one across of everything. But we were over here, we were on this on-air on uh, uh, display. So out of the box, Sierra is putting together a couple of very useful multi-view layouts for you, but we can actually create our own custom multi-views just, uh, just by clearing the situation. So we're starting clean, right? What if I want to bring one of these guys and just uh, draw a little box, and there's my first input. See? Now, did you see how quickly, the moment I left the, the mouse trigger, it just showed right up on the actual broadcast output. A lot of these multi-viewers take a little bit of processing time. A lot of these multi-viewers say, okay, tell me, give me all your inputs, and then I'm gonna think about it and churn the data for a little bit, and then I'm gonna put out the output in the multi-view. This Sierra uh, device is a little bit stronger than that. It's a little bit stronger than that. Let's go back to, to, to V1 for a sec. I'm gonna, bring out another, uh, I'm gonna bring out another source for you, just to give you an idea of how fast we're going. Uh, probably want C. All right, so I draw the box on my screen, and immediately it shows up right there on the live version of the multi-view. It just so happens there's nothing going into C1 right now. Let's see, maybe, a, a, maybe A's got something. Yeah, there we go. So the moment I let my mouse click release, the full motion high definition video shows right up in the multi-viewer. So let's get rid of C here. Um, a little earlier today, a, a very good friend of ours, Larone, Larone Alfredo, called me up and said, Jesse, that multi-viewer looks great. Can I use it to give a three vertical split. I'm gonna be shooting a special uh, race where I've got three racers that are, that are very important to highlight there. You know, I wanna close up on their face and I wanna see them running, but I wanna see three of them side by side. Can you do that for me? And uh, Lerone 
Yes, we can. Yes, we absolutely can. Come on over to the virtual input one and I'll show you how it's done. We're going to take input one, move it over here, make them big. We're going to put input two, make him big. And let's say uh, runner three is over here. And he's a little bit in front. But there you are. Pretty good. There's my three input multi view. What if I wanted an on air timer at the same time? Come up to the top here, select on air timer, and boom, there's your, there's your countdown timer or your, or your on air timer to get, to get your digital clock. What if I also needed to put Midtown Video's logo right in the front of the screen? It's pretty simple. Just put it on, drag it anywhere you want. So, <laughs> you could really mess this up if you, if you went wild on the, on the web served up interface of the Sierra Multiviewer. So what happens when you get yourself in trouble? Well, I'll show you. Jump back into, jump back into Virtual One with me. We've, we've, we've really messed things up here. We've jostled up the screen with several inputs. We've got them all out of whack and out of ratio. All you got to do is come down here and select any of the pre-programmed multiviews for you. And immediately, as soon as you click the mouse, it jumps right back into shape. If, in, if instead of feeling like you've jumbled the screen, you really liked the multiview that you created, you just come down to the bottom here. Take, let's take a closer look. You come down to the bottom here, name your layout, call it Jesse, and save. Done. Done. Easy as pie. All right? So that, my friends, is the Sierra Multiviewer. It, uh, <laughs> it really helps you look at a lot of inputs at once. Let me set the scene for you. Let's say you're a duplication house. All right? You've got 16 DVD recorders. You've got 16 uh, Blu-ray disc recorders. You've got four, I don't know, Final Cut Pro systems, and you've got four television monitors that you need to route all your signals to. You get yourself a 72 by 72 router. Everything that's a source goes into the inputs. Everything that's a destination goes into the outputs, right? All of your routing can be done right from your laptop computer or a hardware control panel. And so rather than having to have a rat's nest of cables and always be unplugging DVD player four from Final Cut Pro output six, you can have all of your cables patched into one system and route them either from a hardware control panel or from your LAN-enabled computer device. Pretty simple. Once again, we'd like to say a big thank you to our friends at Kramer Electronics for welcoming some of this awesome new gear to the Dot Video Show. Um, our friend John Waltz has been here helping us do all the engineering, get things set up and, and routed for us. If you'd like to know anything more about Kramer Electronics, Sierra's Aspen routers or Sierra's SVG multiviewer. Make sure to send us an email or give us a phone call. We will give you your very own personal de uh, demonstration and make sure that the right digital studio essentials get into your digital studio.